Big Buck Registry's Big Buck Podcast, episode number 73, Ozonics, with Ozonics insider Dennis Fink. Big Buck Registry is a virtual museum of hunting stories. We preserve a piece of Americana by interviewing and recording hunters about their hunts and experiences from across the country. And who knows, maybe we'll learn a thing or two along the way that'll help us take our hunt to the next level. Hi, I'm Chris Bieber, Technical Director at Carbon Synergy, and I'm listening to my favorite podcast on iTunes, Big Buck Registry's Big Buck Podcast. Hello, Big Buck Registry fans. This is Allison roberts and from Go Girl Cosmetics and Scent Elimination Products. It's about 4.45 a.m. Saturday morning, and I'm gearing up for a big hunt today. I've got my Go Girl makeup on, the bow is in the truck, and I'm waiting for this week's Big Buck podcast to come out. I learn a little something every week that I listen to the show. This is Allison roberts and and you're listening to Big Buck Registry's Big Buck Podcast. Hi, this is Jackie Bushman of Buckmasters. You're listening to my favorite podcast, Big Buck Registry's Big Buck Podcast. Welcome to the Big Buck Registry's Big Buck Podcast. This is your host, Jay Scott, and I am here also with the Buckeye of the Mostest from Ohio, Dusty Phillip. What's happening, Dusty? Yo, yo, yo. It's Buck 30. Buck 30. It is Buck 30. Get your rear to the tree stand this morning. Time to get your buck on. Yeah, Uh, man. If if you're not seeing the rut, it should be here by now. It's it's not quite here in New Hampshire, but it happens the same time every year, right around the twentieth, plus or minus five five to ten days there. Uh, but boy, the activity is out there—the rubs and the scrapes and the just the you know that feel that that utter cool, crisp, cold stuff is just here. And the deer tracks are going all over the place. Uh, they're just tearing it up. It's awesome. I'm seeing deer where I never see deer. Exactly. It's just that, that, that's the cool part about the rut kicking in. It's that variable that you just wait for every year, where you know it's not a patterning thing. It's now are they going to show up in the, the spots where you, you hope that the they show up this time of year, not routinely every year, kind of thing. It's just one of them times of year that you could be in the woods and in a spot that that you felt like was nothing before. Yeah could become the best spot in the woods now yep so awesome just the best time of the year it's just just it gives me that warm and fuzzy feeling you know what i'm talking about oh for sure you know it's just it's one of them times of year where where the the hunter that's not very experienced can luck into a monster buck exactly hey do you remember the firearm or weapon you used to kill your first deer oh yeah absolutely what was it crossbow crossbow gotcha I asked that question on the, the Facebook page, and it seemed like everybody remembered that exact thing. Oh, yeah. Who wouldn't, right? Who doesn't I mean, forget that, right? Yeah, it's uh, one of them things that, that's supposed to stick with you for, you know, I, I, I forget a lot of stuff, but I, I, I can honestly say that I don't forget my hunts. I don't either. I can pretty much give you, sometimes I, I wouldn't, I, they get a little fuzzy sometimes, like wh- which one happened before the next, but I never forget the hunt itself. That's the cool part about whitetail hunting. Yeah. And, and any other kind of hunting, you know, it it, it just sticks with you. One of them things that uh, you'll go to the grave with your memories. Yeah. It's it's some of the best stuff you can ever fill your head with. And it's not just about, it's it's the whole experience. It's who you're with, the temperature that day, the terrain, what you wore, the firearm or, or weapon you carried, uh, whether you're brother aunt sister uncle cousin was with you uh, all that stuff plays in and you'll be able to describe in detail if you just took a, a minute to kind of get into that peaceful zone and and extract it from your brain you oh can yeah for lay sure. it down yeah minute by minute I, I can't wait till my children are old enough to really put the bow in their hand and get in the woods with me I can't either. It's just the best. And my kids are starting to do that, uh, especially my son. My daughter, uh, she could care less, but my son is engaged. He's just not quite big enough to handle the firearm. He's just, the stock isn't quite right. Even the kid's one's not quite perfect. So we're right. get, we're getting there. My, my middle daughter the other night, full moon here in Ohio, she goes outside. She said, Dad, I need to talk to the moon. I said, let's go outside. 
We walk outside, Jay, and the first thing she asks the moon is, Moon, do you think I'll be a great hunter? Nice. That's when you know you're raising them right. Absolutely. That's fantastic. When your kids talk about hunting, it's just the best. So this time of year, with the bucks running around, do you care about smell still when they're just kind of acting nutty? Yeah, and yes and no. Right. Um, it's one of the times a year that it really doesn't matter. I mean, it, I've had bucks literally have to get out of their way because they was going to run me over. Right. It, it didn't matter what I smelled like. Didn't matter. It didn't matter what I looked like. It, di- it didn't matter at all. They was going to plow me over if I didn't move. Yeah, you could have had some some kind of uh, polo perfume on if you, and then they wouldn't care. You know, Absolutely. slick back hair, you know, you, you could have had any any cosmetic product that you would find in your bathroom when you're going out dancing, and they would have still showed up. I don't know what you do when you go dancing, but. Uh. <laughs> I don't either. Cause I, I don't go dancing. I don't even know why I said that. It's so that's, weird. That's funny right there. So you, you get all dolled up to go dancing, it sounds like. Actually, I don't. I don't even go dancing. <laughs> and if I so, did, I wouldn't get dolled up. But I'm just kind of imagining, like, what is this? What what is the stinkiest stuff you can find in your bathroom and put it on you? Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to say this. You could probably. I don't know if you've ever been to the dollar store, and and I go there. You know, I'm guilty of it. But there's this soap called Irish Spring. You you can walk sure. by the soap. You could walk by the soap aisle and smell Irish Spring from a couple aisles over. Oh yeah. The, you, you could you could have that on, and the bucks would literally not care. Right. Or well, what about but, the what about like the colognes that we used to? I don't know. You ever wear a cologne like in junior high or yeah, anything? Absolutely. Like? Yeah. Throw I, some I of that still, stuff I, on. I still wear some cologne every once in a while. It depends on where I'm headed out to. But you're not going dancing. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> That's. But awesome. yeah, it's uh But you know, I, I got to say this: the the does somewhat are still pretty alert this time of year right you know that you, it's hard to beat a mature doe um in heat or not with a with a buck chasing her through the woods she's still got her nose in, in, in pretty good activation mode so i think that uh you know some kind of scent control is definitely necessary right and uh i think our guest going to talk about uh, one of the most unique scent control systems out there it's it's kind of almost sci-fi if you because you can't you can't see what it's doing. We're talking yeah, to, to Dennis Fink from Ozonics. This is one of the things where it's, uh, you know, it, it's science at its best. It, it's, uh, you know, it, w- when they talk about the inventor, you know, the person that come up with Ozonics. Sure. Having a doctorate, that you know, that right. that takes it to the next level. And, and, and Dennis having the doctorate in science that, you know, and uh, with the, he knows the chemicals and the, you know, the research that it takes to make the ozone ozone yeah and ozone is kind of a fa- fascinating chemical um where it just it loves to grab onto other particles and as scent particles are being released it'll grab onto it and just form a bond where it doesn't smell anymore basically makes it inert 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 is something that doesn't smell like it's crazy it's crazy let's let's get on with the the phone with with dennis and see what's going on in ozonics yeah let's break this down because our listeners were the ones that brought this up i threw out the question what do you want to know about the most what's that one product on the market you want to know about the most right now everybody said ozonics so we went out and we found them let's get him on the line and find out more about ozonics all right let's break it down dennis fink welcome to the big buck registry's big buck podcast how are you my friend i'm great how are you i'm doing well doing well man uh What's going on in your neck of the woods these days? Well, I'm just recovered from surgery, but other than that, life is great and business is good, so no complaints. Well, that's good. You sound strong and healthy, so uh, sounds like you the, the surgery, you kind of kicked its butt and on to bigger and better things. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. So, Dennis, tonight we want to talk about ozonics, all right? And I've been getting a lot of questions about ozonics, people asking me what I thought, wanting to know if it works, have I heard about it, all this kind of stuff. So I thought nothing better than to get somebody from Ozonics on the show and give us the, the full insight as to what in the heck this thing is. It's kind of shaken up the industry a little bit. People are talking about it. People are using it. We've talked to people on our show that have used it with success, yet we don't know a lot about it. All I know is it's got a cool name, and I don't know anything about how it works or what it's supposed to do, but people are using it in a hunting application. So that's why you're here tonight. Sounds great. All right. Dusty, are you ready? Absolutely. You know, it's something that's on the market that uh, 
you know, it's, it's obviously people are picking up on it. We're hearing more and more about Ozonix and, uh, I'm ready to learn something tonight. Very cool. Ready to share what I know, guys. Okay. All right. So, Dennis, tell us where you're at right now. Physically, I'm in Lake Jackson, Texas. The founder and uh, inventor is Scott Elrod, and he runs a dental practice here in Lake Jackson. And I was one of his patients and their friend, and uh, when he came up with the idea, he came by and visited with me, and um, together we decided this had some, some legs, and and did a bunch of research in his garage and played with it and eventually came up with the concept of actually using it in the field versus treatment of clothes, and uh, we made the right decision. Okay, so Ozonics, this thing we know as Ozonics, uh-huh. was invented by a dentist. Well, the ozone, which is the output from the machine, was invented by God. Right. It is, it is a natural substance found in the environment, and God uses basically three mechanisms to clean the planet. One is um, fire, the other right. is water, right. the other is ozone. Ozone is one of those three elements. It's a natural yeah, cleaner, when, you're saying. When you get, when you get an, like an, an eruption from a volcano or um, any of the pollutants that are released in the environment, it's ozone that comes in and begins to change those components back to natural elements that are less threatening to the environment. Um, when the EPA was doing investigation back in the 60s and trying to figure out a way to measure pollutants in the environment, their ozone is always present because its job is to clean up those pollutants. And so they made it the measurement by which they uh, determine how much pollution is in the air, and that's why you have what's called ozone alerts. It's not ozone itself that is the actual pollutant. It is the things that surround it that are, but it's a way for them to measure. Gotcha. All right, so the ozone is something that is created by this box that, I guess, ozonics is made from. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, basically, when man figured out what ozone was back in the 1850s, uh, as I said to you earlier, um, ozone is the natural output of any friction in the environment. Hmm. So when rain falls, when um, uh, you get a, a, an eruption, when you get a lightning strike, when you get anything that creates friction in the environment, ozone is created. And uh, all we do in the machine is create some friction. Interesting. All right. So we pull, we pull air into the environment, into the unit, and uh, the friction in the in, in the, in the uh, inside of the unit causes some of the oxygen that's in the uh, air. Uh, oxygen is about eighteen percent of uh, air. It causes some of those oxygen to split, and so you got some free oxygen molecules roaming around. And one of the things they have an affinity for is other oxygen molecules, and so you wind up with O2 being oxygen. This, the individual oxygen atom bonds to that O2 and makes an O3 molecule, and that's ozone. And then the, the half-life of ozone is very short. It, it, that third molecule cannot wait to find something to react with. And it'll react with uh, pollen, it'll react with dust, it'll react with your clothing, it'll react with anything in contact, and fortunately will also react with human odor or other odors in the environment. Gotcha. Ozone has been, ozone has been used since the 1850s to mitigate fire fire smoke inside homes, mold remediation, a bunch of different uh, applications. See, they actually is used to clean water. There's a bunch of things it's used for. We just took that technology and applied it to honey. So how did they start using ozone in the 1850s? How did they even know it existed? Well, they discovered it. That's when it was discovered by a scientist in the 1850s. And okay. It took them a little while to figure out how to use it. But it became industrial, industrially applicable. Uh, as early as the 1890s, but it really started taking off in the 1930s and 40s. And they used it to clean clean out fire-ridden places that had gone through a destruction or something like that? In, any place where there's odor. Interesting. Okay, so you have oxygen. It runs to the machine. It goes through some kind of a friction device, which I assume is like patented and very uh, unique. It's just a simple coil that we pass a current through. Okay. Basically creating, creating lightning in a box. Lightning in a box. Interesting. And lightning, I mean, this sounds like sci-fi to me. Dusty, do you, do you agree with this? Yeah, absolutely. This is crazy. All right, but this is this is what science is all about. <laughs> During it's when a lightning strikes nearby, you get that fresh smell. Right. You're smelling ozone. If now that you know what I just told you, if you'll look at lightning, a lightning bolt, sometimes they stand out pretty stark in the environment. Look at the edges of it, and you'll see they're kind of a bluish purple. That's ozone being created. Okay. 
Now, there's an ozone layer on the Earth, which helps to cleanse the Earth. Is that is that what you're saying it is? Well, there's ozone in the air. There's also an ozone in the upper atmosphere. It has a different purpose, but bottom line is ozone, ozone does clean whatever it touches. Okay, gotcha. So you got these free oxy, oxy, oxygen molecules that are looking to hang out with other molecules. That's it. As much as possible. They love them. They have the strong love just of... just something to react with. I just want to grab something, hold on to it. Yeah, and they're just looking for something to react with, and human odor, when it's available, you know, what we do is we produce an, a curtain of ozone between you and the animal on the downwind side if the product is, is used properly. Okay. And so you have this curtain of ozone where there's, you know, imagine a sheet or a blanket of, of oxygen molecules that are sitting there, ozone molecules that are sitting there, and as your odor molecule hits them, it's surrounded by these ozone molecules, and it starts to change that odor molecule immediately. It's an instantaneous reaction. And by the time that molecule doesn't go away, but by the time it gets to the deer, it's no longer human. Gotcha. Gotcha. Talk to me about some product development here. How long did it take to develop this whole system? We started um, testing in 2005 and came up with our first product in 2008. Wow. So you put three years in research and development just to get this thing right. That's correct. And even then, we didn't get it right the first time. We took the second time to get it right. Right. I, I would imagine it took a few tries. And yep. was so the the dentist uh, is a doctor, I assume. That's correct. And he was just had this idea one day that this would be good for he, hunting. Is he a he hunter did, himself? He, yeah, he's a hunter, but he was using he uses ozone in his practice for a variety of purposes. Ozone is also a, a uh, is, as a cleansing agent. Can be used to sanitize things. And obviously, in a dental office, you got lots of things you want to sanitize. And uh, he was working on a patient one day, and, and she was had a bleeding condition, and so he was having to cauterize tissue to stop the bleeding. And burning flesh is not something that patients or assistants like to smell, and it was causing them uh, discomfort. And uh, basically, they were retching. So that much, that much of the human order, the, the flesh, burning flesh that was being produced. Sure. And so, so Scott said, well, why don't you go get the ozone? You don't see if it'll help. Because they used it in the evenings to reduce, to treat the office environment, to mitigate uh, dental smells and get in a, in a medical office. Right. And uh, anyway, so the lady went and got it and turned it on. And within a minute or two, basically the odor went away and then the smoke started going away. And Scott said, hmm. And so he would finish his, finish his patient and that home when he was driving home. But that when he was driving home from work, he kind of hit himself in the forehead and said, "I wonder if he was hunting all of his life getting busted." And <laughs> you know, he, just, right. he made the he made the connection. So th- this was actually a device he had in his his dental practice. Yeah, yeah. There, there are, as I said, ozonators have been around since the late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. So it's hmm. not something that the technology is is pretty well understood in how to make ozone. The issue is how do you apply it. Right, and that's that's where Scott's original invention was is was in the idea of how to apply it in the field. Interesting. So when you're using this device, I mean, it's a fairly large contraption by the looks of it. What is it like? I don't know, uh, eight eight or nine inches wide and three or four seven inches. By, seven by five by three. Seven by five by three. Okay, so you got to haul this out into the woods with you, and wh- where do you place this thing? Where's the best optimal place to place it? Next to you, but below you, on top of you. You're using it in a blind. Okay. Uh, in a tree, um, it's harder to tr- to treat odor in a tree because your entire body is a wick to the to the wind. Yep. And so, so the issue is you want to mount the unit above head level, not necessarily overhead, but just above head level on the downwind side of your body, and angle it down so that you're forcing the distribution of the ozone to go towards the ground. And then your, what that does is allows you to create this curtain between you and the animal. You don't want the ozone on, ozone on you, not because it will hurt you, but because your your clothing and your skin will use it up, and we don't make enough to treat you. We're just trying to treat those little molecules coming off your body. So think of it like a sheet or a glove, and as your odor molecule is carried by the wind toward the animal, it's this ozone curtain gets um, changed. And so by the time it gets to the animal, and it happens within a few feet, by the time it gets to the animal, it's no longer human. Gotcha. So working out of a blind is potentially better with this application because it's going to trap the ozone around you, thereby eliminating the scent. But 
when you're yeah, in a blind is a different it's a different concept. What okay. you're trying to do there is uh, in a ground blind you're trying to keep the order inside the blind with you. We all know that some exits, and so so we we teach it's a little little odd. We actually teach to crack it down a window so that you actually know how the wind is going to leave the blind. You know where it's going to leave. Okay. You create a bit, you create a chimney basically. And uh, so as, you, as the wind comes into your blind, assuming you're facing the wind, uh, it's going to rush around the blind a little bit and it's going to try to exit through the opening you've made. And you have your unit mounted over that opening and pointed out that opening so that as the odor along with the wind leaves the blind, it's being treated. The harder the wind blows, the more you want to bring the unit into the blind with you. The less it blows, you got to move it more towards the opening. Gotcha. Uh, I got a question for Dennis. What, Dennis, what what do you do for a living to be involved with the uh, making of the ozonics? I spent um, I retired from Dow Chemical. Okay. And I spent uh, almost thirty years there working in research and manufacturing and supply chain. And so, and then I had a, owned a furniture store. And so, when Scott was came to talk to me about bringing this to market, that was the question he asked me, or the question I asked him, I should say, is what do you want? What do you want from me? And he said, I don't know anything about marketing and manufacturing, and so like you've done some of that, there's a way you could help me. And so I was bringing industrial experience to him is what I was doing. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Gotcha. I also have a do- I also have a doctorate, so I understood the chemistry. Oh wow. All right. So you guys are both doctors. Yes, sir. Well, that, that helps. That definitely helps. So what do where do you where does the what's the talk around the town? I mean, everybody's talking about this thing, and you've well, got you know we we spent we spent I mean. Look, we were skeptics when we started. Right. You know, we we had, we had never the concept was 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 legitimate, but we had never actually tested the technology in front of an animal. And so, in January of 2007, we went down to Uvalde with a, with some units that we had had manufactured specifically for us, and uh, set up about six to seven uh, brush blinds. So we would actually have our bodies exposed to the breeze, but obviously the brush was intended to camouflage us from the animals. And um, and then we just set up corned animals to feeders so that we knew that, that they would be we knew that they would be coming in directly downwind. And then we tested various ozone outputs until we found the sweet spot and it was just like magic. We had pigs, we had um, bobtail cats, we had coyotes, we had deer, we had a variety of different animals that came in uh, at various times from a downwind situation, and, and depending on the amount of ozone we had output, uh, the animals did not discover us. So we knew we had something there. And then the question became, what were we going to produce and what were we going to go to market with? Is we built what's called the HR100, a little black box, unfortunately. It took a lead acid battery that weighed five pounds, and it was just too big and too bulky. But it did prove to a small subset of people that purchased it that the technology worked. And so we came out in 2010 with the current HR 200, and it has. We've had great success ever since. We've grown at you know very very positive rates every year. Gotcha. Now, could you walk us through kind of how to operate the unit? It looks like it's got a lot of buttons, and uh, what are the yeah, different features it's on the? Pretty on simple. It? There's an on-off button, and obviously when it goes on, what it does is it there's some buttons on the left, and basically it, it marches through those buttons. And one of the buttons it lights up is a little red button at the bottom, which is a dual purpose, which tells you that it's operating in ground blind mode when it comes on. And then after it's gone through its startup sequence, there's a mode button above the on-off button that you can depress. And then the upper left-hand button, which has a dual purpose, will turn green and tell you that you're now in the tree stand mode. And basically the difference between the two is that there's a, about... 50% more output of ozone occurring in the tree stand mode versus the ground blind mode. And that's done because we learned in the first unit that uh, when you're in an, when you're in that open air environment, you need a little more ozone. And so that was the idea behind that. Now, the, the, little, the buttons on the left basically have, I said, dual purpose. The bottom button tells you that it's in ground blind mode. The upper button tells you it's in tree stand mode. And then there are four buttons that tell you the status of your battery. So basically 100%, 75, 50, and 25, and zero. Gotcha. How long does the battery last? It depends on the battery you have. The unit, the unit comes with a standard battery that gives you four hours in, in tree stand mode and five hours in ground blind mode, and we produce a accessory battery for hunters that like to hunt all day, which has twice that uh, capability. Gotcha. Very interesting. So, all right, so here's the big question. 
what does it cost if I wanted to buy one of these things? The unit retails at three ninety nine. Okay. Uh, an extra battery will cost you either eighty bucks, seventy nine ninety nine for the standard battery, or one nineteen for the XL battery. And uh, you know, it, 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 there there is obviously some cost to the unit. If you go online, you'll find that to build a uh, ozone generator with the output that our unit puts out is going to cost you between four and six hundred dollars at a minimum. And those units are are using an extension cord. Our unit is using a battery, which increases the cost by about a third. So we we've, we've taken a hit on the on the wholesale side in order to build the business, and and we realize it's it's not an inexpensive item. So we offer a hundred percent money back guarantee for units purchased in the same year. So you can buy one January first of a given year and use it till December thirty first. If you decide it's not for you, we'll give you your money back. Hmm. Interesting. That's well, I, that that's a heck of a, a promise, really. So we have we have less than one half of one percent return for all reasons. Interesting. So we have we it's not something we're worried about. People buy the product, use it, they're gonna keep it. Wow. All right, let's let's get into some hunts. Uh you, you said that you had a few different hunting stories. Uh well, I, I prefer to tell the stories of people that have, have used used the product because people enjoy hearing other people's stories versus our stories. And I had a guy call me today, uh, lives in Florida, uh, hunted in, in a, with an outfitter up in Illinois. And um, when he was there, there were several hunters in camp, and one of them was a uh, individual who was um, it, it lost the use of his legs. And um, so, obviously, he was hunting in a wheelchair, which also limited his ability to clean himself the way most hunters uh if you have cleaned themselves in the past. And and so he had an odor issue that he just could not get rid of because of the, the issues he dealt with because of his disability. And uh, so this fellow that had called me told me about he shot a nice 135-inch buck. And, and um, this this uh, individual that was had a disability was complaining about not, about not seeing animals. And so the outfitter drove he and another fellow down to Bass Pro, which is about an hour and a half away, and they, because of this guy, had the other guy had success in purchasing those Onyx units, and came back, and that disabled hunter was able to take a larger deer, the biggest deer of his life, than the guy, other guy that had hunted, and just was so grateful and thankful that the guy introduced him to it because he felt like it put him on parity with everybody else. Gotcha. Well, that's an awesome story. It's amazing. Well, it's, it's one we hear often. I mean, we had a guy that um, purchased our original unit back in 2008 and has hunted with a unit ever since. And he sent me a text this year that for the sixth successive year, he shot a public young buck. And he said <laughs> in, six of those, in five of those six cases, they were directly downwind. He said, you guys have built a product that I will never, ever hunt without. Holy smokes. That's crazy. It's, uh, I mean, you can't see it. I mean, you can't see ozone, so you can't really tell. You can smell, you can smell it, which is, which is if, if, if you point it at you. And so that's the only evidence that it's there. So you can smell the stuff when it comes out of the, the unit. You can, you can smell ozone, yeah. And, okay. And uh, so that's that's your evidence that it's actually being produced. A lot of people ask us, do deer smell the ozone? And the answer is the ozone is gone within 15 or 20 feet. Okay. It's back to, it's back to uh, being, that's why I said it reacts very quickly with anything that it touches. Um, and the other side of it is, is that deer smell ozone all the time. When it rains, when lightning strikes, whatever, ozone is not an unnatural substance to them. Okay. So it's a naturally recurring substance. It's looking for other scent particles to jump on top of and reduce it and neutralize it so it doesn't smell anymore. And it's just. It, it's not that, it's not, it's not that, um, what's the word, selective. Right. It will react with anything it touches. <laughs> gotcha. Fallen, the leaves on the trees, the bark on the trees. Anything it touches is going to react with. So that's why we teach you to leave it, to position it so that it's in the air between you and the animal so that it's hopefully there's as much ozone as possible available to, to react with your odors that reach your body. Gotcha. So animals don't smell, the, or they can smell it, but they don't care, or it neutralizes pretty much so fast by the time yeah. it gets to that. Yeah, if they're within 15, unless they're within 15 or 20 feet. Okay. Smell it anyway. Gotcha. Is ozone safe to be around? Yeah, I mean, the Environmental Protection Agency, 
agency has limits on the amount of ozone that can break breathe in eight hour eight hour period. Ozone is like so many substances that we deal with every day, from gasoline to water. I mean, we drink water, but when you dip your head in the water, uh, submerge your head in water for two or three minutes, and you're going to have too much water. Um, it's 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 so it's a concentration issue. And what and I'm going to get real techy with you, and I hate to do that. No, that's all right. It's basically uh, the EPA and NIOSH and OSHA teach that. You can breathe 0.075 parts per million or more ozone, 0.08 some of them, for an eight-hour period. We don't produce that much, and in an outdoor environment, you're never going to breathe that much. So the uh, the odds of you getting too much ozone with our unit is virtually impossible. You'd have to pipe it directly into your face to, with, with duct tape to do it. And who's going to do that, and why would they do it? And even then, they don't produce enough that will kill you. Now, can, is there, can ozone kill you? Yes. At 5. 5.0 parts per million, it can. And we're not anywhere near that. Okay. We're not even, we're not even within a thousand parts of that. So your, your machine cannot produce a lethal dose of ozone. That is correct. Okay. How, what kind of smells can it neutralize? Can it neutralize gasoline? Yeah. Good question. Um, every, every molecule that is produced on the planet has different attributes. And some are more, uh, are larger, some are smaller, some are easily, um, re- they, there's an easy reaction, some are more difficult reaction. Hydrocarbons are one of the more difficult um, things for ozone to break down. Ozone needs to surround a molecule, it doesn't need to. It's better for it to surround the molecule to break it down. That's why it works so, air in, so, so well in an open air environment. But gasoline and fibers or in more, more directly in a carpet or something like that, the ozone will neutralize the gasoline smell in the air, but when you turn it off, you're still going to smell in the carpet. So so it takes, it, you can eventually mitigate it, but it takes a long time in, 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 uh, in, in with gasoline. Now, other things like human odor, it can be done, it's, it's just an easier molecule to break down. So it just depends on the molecule. And there's a lot of chemistry involved in that. Just trust me. That's the way it works. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> trust me. That's the way it works. Trust me. Well, <laughs> if someone wants to get into the chemistry, we, we could do that. But it's they can go online and discover it themselves. There's, it's just that there's some things that are easier to react with and some things that are more difficult to react with. And fortunately, human odor is something that reacts very quickly. Is, is there any particular odor that's a common odor that it, ozone, the ozone will not cut? Nothing that gasoline is probably the most common one um, okay. that I can hear. There's, you know, I don't, I don't know that anybody. I mean, I've, I've heard stories of people going to a gas station and filling up their car, wearing their hunting clothes. I've never seen anybody do it. Um, you know, in that situation, you might get some penetration in your fabric of, of uh, gasoline, especially if you spill it on you. But uh, even in that situation, I think that it's a small amount that, that there's, if you position the unit correctly, as the odor comes off the clothing as it volatilizes, the ozone would probably take care of it depending on the concentration again. Hmm. Would it be safe to say that the positioning of the unit is, is 99% of the success? Yeah, the way, I do, the way I teach it is knock an arrow the wrong way and tell me the result you get. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, an, it's all about application. It's all about using it correctly. you got to get it above head level. you got to get it on the downwind side. You don't want it on you. You want it between you and the animal in the air, between you and the animal. And, and that's what's going to have its most effectiveness, yes. Gotcha. All right, so let's talk about clothing a little bit. How sure. can you, as a hunter, use ozonics to neutralize scents on your clothes? And if you do, will it last if there are scents already there? We, we, we actually, when we first started looking at this, obviously the industry was focused on uh, clothing as a way to mitigate odor. And Scott, being a hunter, that was his, or his mindset was in the beginning. And uh, so we spent a considerable time, over a year, year and a half, we feel like we, in some ways we wasted effort, but we learned a ton um, on using ozone to mitigate odor in fabric. And you can definitely do it, and I could give you a ton of people that are using our technology right now to pre-treat their clothes before they go hunting. And there's a couple ways you can do it. The best way is to hang it in a small you know, closet, put the unit above the uh, clothing, because ozone that is heavier than air and will tend to fall. Um, treat the unit, treat your, I'm sorry, treat your garments inside out for 15 to 20 minutes, reverse them, do the same thing, and have your, um, scent free bag at the bottom and just drop your garments directly into the bag. And until you begin to contaminate it with odor again, those garments are going to be fresh and clean. 
uh, ozone will remove any odors that are there. Um, once you begin to sweat into a garment, uh, obviously it's going to it's going to eventually uh, permeate and eventually it's going to start volatilizing and be released to the environment. And that's why we teach you to use the unit in the field. Interesting. So I could take a garment that has some body odor on it, put it in a, a bag with the ozonics unit, push the go button, it sprays out the ozone, it neutralizes the scent. Then if I take that out, that scent won't come back unless I apply more scent to it? That's correct. It, what it does is basically removes it. I mean, you can you can test that. That's one of the ways we used to do in shows is we'd have guys come up and raise their arms and treat their pits and then and then have them smell their own pits. And it just That's one of the ways we started selling product. Interesting. So it's like indefinite unless you apply more scent to it. Yeah, it's basically neutralized until you um, gum it up again. If okay. You use this from a term. Interesting. If you're using a thermocell, which is supposed to eradicate the or kill off or move the the mosquitoes out of your zone, and you you're using both, will it destroy the effectiveness of a thermocell? Well, in, in an open air environment like a tree stand, you want the thermocell upwind and you want the ozone unit downwind. So it's what it's going to do is is uh, you, you know the thermocell effectiveness is going to come at you first. The ozone should never touch your body, so there's no issue there. In a ground blind, you need to make sure that you have the unit closer to the exit of the window so that you're not putting a lot of ozone into the blind because it will, it will begin to mitigate it at some point um, if it actually has a chance to react with it. So that's the way to manage it. Okay. Is there any maintenance required for this stuff? Not really. Um, the, the, the end of, at the end of the year, you need to uh, charge your battery up to full and discharge it down to 50%. Keep the batteries in a cool, dry environment, uh, preferably in a in a Ziploc bag, so there's not moisture getting to it. Uh, do the same thing with your unit, um, and you know if you just do that every year, you should be in good shape. Obviously, a high humidity environment is not good for electronics, no matter where you are. Gotcha. Is the Ozonics units waterproof? No, it's not. It's it's water resistant in the sense that we design the unit so it has a hood on it, so that if it starts to rain. It will shed water. In a in a in a in a, in a good rain, you don't, you don't need the unit because you're since being driven to the ground by the rain. Um, in a misty type rain situation, you're going to have to use your common sense. If you bring moisture into the unit, when the fan is obviously sucking and bringing air into the unit, if you bring moisture into the unit, it will begin to pop when it hits that electronic coil, and you're turning it off. So you just have to use common sense. If you get the coil wet. You need to make sure it's dry before you turn the unit back on. So it, it's rain. Put in something or get it rained on or something. You have to make sure you do that. Right. So if it's raining, the ozonics unit is out. Yeah, I wouldn't use it in a in a in a, in a rainy situation. Um, you know, it's it's really, as I said, if, if the rain is falling hard enough that that in most situations it's driving your odors to the ground anyway. If it's a light rain, use the unit till it begins to pop. Gotcha. Gotcha. What about Really super cold environments. It'll affect the battery, but not the unit. Okay. Uh, it has nothing. Uh, cold weather, cold uh, does not affect the output of the unit at all. Uh, it'll, it will it will affect the life of the battery, reducing it anywhere from ten to twenty five percent, depending on how cold it is. Um, if you, where you're going to see the unit being affected is the high humidity environment. Uh, the higher the humidity, like you get down in Florida or South Texas, where we are. Uh, if it gets a really like foggy day, there's some that much humidity in the environment, it, it, then it can begin to cause that popping sensation I was telling you about, or it can mitigate, reduce a little bit of the ozone output because ozone will react with water. And so, if there's enough moisture in the air, it will it will affect it that way. But um, in most situations, you're going to be fine. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what else can you do with ozonics? It sounds to me that I mean, you, you can use this in a dental office to remove the smell of burning flesh, and you can use it in your tree stand. Would the wife like it for smells oh, in yeah. the house? Women use it for uh, the, mo- the most common thing is a diaper bucket. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. That's a big and one. It will, it'll, it'll knock the snot out of uh, odor in diaper back, back buckets. <laughs> um, the, uh, the other thing it's used for, like in, in fish fries or cooking. Yeah, yeah. You can clean, you can clean a kitchen. Nothing. Matter of fact, if you have dogs in your house, 
you can run the unit, on, turn your AC on fan only, and put the unit in front of your air return and run it for 15 to 30 minutes, and you'll clean the entire house of dog smell. Wow. Really? So you could yeah. kind of go through and freshen up for a party or whatever, or exactly. a frat house after a night of beer drinking, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm not going to go there, but yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah. My wife and I use it all the time for that report. I'm just thinking outside the box. I mean, there are so many applications where just scent is is just kind of out of control, and you could like seriously neutralize this stuff for a long time. What about cat litter? I'm sorry, say it again. Cat litter, like a, a cat litter oh, box. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, all, all, any any place that that I mean, one of the great tests for the product, and this is gross, is to uh, take feces and you put the unit uh, pointed directly at the feces, and after. You know, a minute to three minutes, depending on the concentration of the ozone and the amount of feces, you can literally put your nose right next to it and you don't smell it. Interesting. You can literally re- react with the surface. It's an interesting test there. You get rid of the odor. But if you stir it, it doesn't, doesn't penetrate. It just treats sure. the surface. Sure, coats it. As the stuff comes out of the machine, does it have like a, I don't know, like a, a feel to it? Does it have like a... Uh, like a, a wet cloud? Other, other, other than the smell, you don't know what's there. You can't feel it, you can't see it, but you can smell it. That's it. That's right. Fascinating. You can you can go into a dark room, uh, like a small bathroom or something like that, or a closet, and turn the unit on and look in the face of it, and you'll see a, the coil that we energize, and you'll see a well, violet to bluish-purple color, and that's actually ozone sitting on the coil. Interesting. Okay. You've got some big names using this stuff. Um, what do they say about it? What does Chuck Taylor say about this stuff? It's, you know, bottom line is all those people came to us as skeptics. We have a cardinal rule in our relationship with anybody that uses the product that's going to be a spokesman that they may use the product for a full season before we engage. Okay. And the reason for that is is because um, the worst thing I can do to them and for us is to put them in a situation where they're, quote, unquote, a spokesman. People start asking questions and they don't know the answer. Hmm. Uh, so, so we we literally have a business rule that they must use the product for a full season and if they use the product for a full season and can demonstrate to us that they are competent in the use of the product, then uh, then we then we begin to engage, and that's the way we engage anybody that we sponsor. That's a pretty good idea. I mean, I see Chuck Taylor on your site, Pat Hogan, Mark and Terry Jewelry, Melissa Bachman. There, these are some people that you've have tested your machine to see if it does or does not work. Will Primos is another one. Just going down through like Greg Miller. Um, and all these guys are, I mean, they wouldn't just pose with it unless it worked. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, one of the challenges you face as a, as a company is how do you get your message out? Um, you know, you can, there's a variety of ways to do it. Um, one of the issues you face is that obviously word of mouth is the most effective and and best way to get uh, somebody to use a product, most of us will go, will make a purchase based on a trusted friend. Um, and we sometimes are that trusted friend. Okay. The challenge with that when you're first starting out or even as you grow the company is, is that there are just a few people that use the product. And so your ability to grow at the rate you need to grow in order to, main, in order to survive, if you need another, other mechanisms to get the message out. And that's where the celebrity spokesman and print ads and all the other reasons you advertise come into being is to try to educate the consumer that the technology exists. I mean, all of us are inundated with ads. I mean, we've seen thousands of commercials every day and forget every one of them. So I've always likened advertising to firing a shotgun into the Grand Canyon. You get somebody's attention because they hear the sound, but unless they run over and actually ask questions, you've accomplished nothing. And and that's obviously a very small subset of people. So all we have done the last several years is try to get the Ozonics brand name out there so people at least know it exists. So when that trusted friend comes by and says, oh, by the way, I bought a unit and I use it and it works, or I met somebody that used the product and they said it worked, whatever their message is, now the person begins to listen because they've heard the name before. And that's really what our advertising has been about. Interesting. Uh, just looking at your operation manual, you have two different units. You've got the HR 150 and the HR 200. Is it one for the tree stand and the blind and the other one's for ground blind? Is that what the difference is? Actually, we, we discontinued making the HR 150 this year. Consumers okay. told us they didn't want that product. Um, 
what what the idea was back in 2010 when we produced the 150 and the 200 is the 150 was we go back one step before that the HR 100 which was the first unit was a ground blind only unit that's what we built it for okay uh, and the uh, consumers immediately began taking it into a tree even though it weighed five pounds plus and trying to use it in a tree and so they taught us we needed to make a tree stand unit also and one of their strong inputs some trusted people that we had using the product was that they needed more output in a tree so we came out with a 150 and the 200 in 2010 the 150 was designed to replace the hr 100 and the 200 with its two modes was basically it had the 150 mode plus the tree stand mode and the first year we did about 90 10 90 percent hr 200s 10 percent hr 150s and eventually got to the point where we weren't even selling in the hr 150s so people told us they would prefer to have the hr 200 gotcha all right so you discontinued the the smaller unit that's it's not smaller it was the same size it just had less output Gotcha. All right. So you want a little more output, get rid of the 150s. So the 150s is not available anymore. Um, what else, what other in the field stories can you tell us about people that have used this product? We have on our website, you know, uh, we have uh, several of our celebrities that are giving their aha moments, the moment when they figured out that Ozonics worked. And, and I've heard literally hundreds of stories from people. Uh, the most common statement I get from Customers that call in want to tell their story was, you're not going to believe what just happened to me. And then they go off to tell their particular story about uh, how the product worked for them. Gotcha. Uh, there's, there's, been, there's been some really sweet stories. I had a guy that uh, called me in the last couple of days who has a 10 year old daughter that he's trying to introduce to hunting. And she, she got, she got bored because it took so long to see an animal. And then they would come in, bus, and they would leave. And he said, uh, and they were hunting in a ground blind together using a single unit. And he said, what Ozonix has changed for me is she's now seeing enough animals to keep her interest. Hmm. And she's getting excited. And this year she took her first doe. So it, it begins to establish opportunities for the consumer that, that helps them to, you know, obviously engage their family, but also to see more animals. And that's what we're all about, right? Right. That's cool. That's very cool. What uh, What's the biggest deer, biggest buck shot year to date with this stuff? 238 in Canada. 238 in Canada. And what was the setup with that particular situation? Ground blind. Okay. Very interesting. Um, what would you say to the skeptics out there? Try it. 100% money back guarantee. If you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. It's hard to beat. You know, it's just that simple. Right. Uh, we found that that removed most of the objections. What's happening to us now for the first several years from 2010 through even last year uh, people will go online and, and uh, attack us or characterize us in certain ways. And um, if, if, if there was going to be a response, it was generally going to come from us uh, or, or someone that um, we had either paid or, and I don't mean that we paid them to respond to that, but they were a celebrity. Um, or so, well, if you, if some of our uh, users were beginning to, enter, to step in and, and make responses. We've, we've got you know, tens of thousands of views in the field now. We don't have to respond anymore. Our, our, our customers are jumping in and saying either you haven't used the product or you don't understand it because it works. Okay. And, and, and the issue of does it work is over. Okay. I mean, the science is golden. I mean, I, 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 I need to explain to you that the, the issue is not does it work. It never has been does it work. Um, because you know, we, we had a situation on our website, we, we, we direct people to a, uh, FBI test that was done with trained animals in a New York subway using our original unit where the animals could not find contraband that they were trying to find, uh, because the ozone had covered up the odor. Really? Um, we feel, feel and Stream did an article on us earlier this year in, uh, in the July issue where they took a human being and put him into, um, there were, I think, I think there were 12 or so cardboard boxes in the field and they would put this person in a, one of the boxes and they had a trained animal that was to find the human. And they tried it using sprays and carbon suiting and, and an ozonics unit. And, um, the, uh, the time to find the human was very, very short in the first two and it took them almost a minute to find the human use an ozonics unit, and I will tell you that if they had used the technology as we teach it, it would have been longer than that. So 
I mean, bottom line is, does it work is over. It's just a done deal. It, it works. Huh. The issue is, do you use it correctly? It's, it's like arguing, does the compound bow work? Right, right. Okay. That's, that's, uh, that kind of tells a tale right there. That's very cool. Um, so how do we find Ozonics if we want to buy one? Do you, do you sell it directly or do you have it at different stores? How do you go and buy one if you want to? Well, we have, we have pretty good distribution. Cabela's, Bass Pro, Gander Mountain, Shields, Dix, Academy, um, no Sleep Farm. Uh, there's, there's pretty good distribution among the major retailers in the hunting industry. Uh, the person who wants to find the product, they can find it from a local retailer. A lot, lot of bow shops. I mean, it's just, you know, we, 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 as I said, we have pretty good distribution now across the country and even into Canada and South, South Africa. Uh, we do so online ourselves. So there's, they should have no trouble finding the product if they want to find it. Gotcha. All right. And just to kind of solidify that the company is going to be behind us for a while, if we get into buying these things that, you know, we're not going to buy a unit and the company is going to disappear. How strong is the company and where do you want to take it? We, we, we've grown 25 to 50% every year we've been in business. Actually, a couple of years more, more than that. And um, we want to grow this thing to be a, um, you know, to, to use my partner's uh, words, to be one of the leading uh, brands in the industry. Is there any other competition out there besides you, or are you, are you the only player in town? We're the only player on this particular technology because it's, we, have, we have patent we have patent protection, and we've had to enforce that patent a couple of times. Interesting. We success doing it. So. so you got some people kind of infringing there? People testing. Testing. <laughs> and, uh, gotcha. We, gotcha. We educated them via our, our attorneys that the, the technology was ours to utilize until the patents run out, and and um, we were successful doing that. Gotcha. Very successful. Dust, do you have any questions for Dennis? You know, uh, Dennis, I think you fulfilled what we need to know about the Ozonics. Uh, I, I don't, Jay, and uh, I'm, I'm really interested in uh, picking up a unit now and, and giving it a try for myself. Yeah, it's, it is it, it is one of those things you that you're just like, hmm, it's so like Star Trek, you know, sci-fi out there that you're like, I don't know if I really – believe in this stuff but i, I think dennis you, you kind of painted the picture of what it is and and taking away a lot of those misconceptions that might be out there that this thing actually does work and it's it's hard to you know trust something that you can't see but it's real it, it's a real thing and chemistry is very much that way you just you can't see it in action but the the results as you use it will tell whether or not you've done a good job with this unit we're starting to have some fun things happen like uh, people are starting to report that um, they can, they, one of the challenges you have when you're hunting blinds or trees is that when the deer discover that you're there, uh, they either don't come back or the first thing they do when they walk in the fields look directly at the tree or directly at the blind and, and, and test it. And we're starting to hear people tell us that, that by using the technology, they, they can hunt a location much, much longer, even all season without animals detecting them. Hmm. Um, yeah, the other thing that's happening is, is that the the, um, the ability to get in and out. You can use the technology to get in and out. I mean, obviously, obviously you got to hold the unit above your head while you're walking in, but you can use it for that purpose and just get on the downwind side, and it and it removes the potential of being caught or being busted and drive and pushing the animals out. Uh, there's a lot of ways the technology can be used, and obviously, we're working on improving ways to deliver it over in the years ahead. But um, it's been a fun, fun ride, and we learn, and the consumers continue to learn, and they offer suggestions, and we learn from that. And we, our goal is to provide a technology that the consumer can go into the field and hunt an animal, and and where they need to do it to defeat the animal's nose. And we're going to focus on that, and like a like a lightning bolt to the ground, and do the best we can at delivering that kind of technology. Gotcha. Very nice, Dennison. My final question is, where can we find more information about Ozonics? Uh, we being me, Dusty, the Big Buck Registry community, which is 125,000 strong, and all the listeners that listen to the show, if we have more questions, is there a way to reach out to your company to get those questions answered? Sure. I mean, probably the, probably the, the quickest and best way and the most anonymous way to do it is to go on our website at www.ozonicshunting.com. And um, we have a frequently asked questions section there that the users can read through and, 
and get uh, guidance. There's a ton of information about the chemistry and the, and the products themselves and how they work and and um, the articles I told you uh, from Fox News and from Field and Stream on the, on the earlier testing that was done or or uh, discoveries that were done from using animals to, to detect contraband. Um, so there's there's a lot of access to information there. Uh, that they're free to call the office to and ask questions if they choose to do that. That number is 979-285-2400. Awesome. Well, Dennis, this has been a pleasure. And Dusty, I don't know if you have any final questions for Dennis, but uh, I think we've pretty much covered exactly the topic we wanted to cover tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and uh, you know, I, I don't have any further questions, uh, but uh, I'll be curious to uh, see what I can get my hands on to take my hunt to the next level with the Ozonics unit. Yeah, sounds like you got a winner here, Dennis. Send your send your uh, pictures of the bucks you take to us. We'll post them on the website and give you credit. There we go. Thanks, guys. Thanks for thank joining you. us. Well, I got to say thank you to Dennis from Ozonics for getting into the whole story behind this stuff, this this ozone thing that's produced by this box. I mean, that's no, basically what it is. I'm blown away. Like, who would have thought that that this particular unit would do so much for the hunting industry? Right. It's kind of funny to think that. It came from a dentist trying to keep the odors that are produced from the smells that occur when you drill into a tooth and uh, to just kind of make it more pleasant for somebody sitting in the dentist chair. And then it, you know, light bulb goes on. Hey, I can apply this into the field of hunting and control human scent so that the deer can't smell you. Right. I wonder if it covers up your dancing perfume, cologne. I don't know. But I'm not. I'm not. I don't know if I'm going to try that. I'm not going to experiment. I don't think <laughs> the price tag is is still a, a tad rich for me. Uh, as much as as good as it is, I, I don't know if I'm just going to go test it on some cologne. Just to right, see. you know. And I'm curious to see if there's something that you can screen rain from getting into that unit. Right. There's, there's got to be some kind of filtration system that uh, you can put in front of the air intake on that on that unit. To make that completely functionable during rain, I still feel that there's some scent loose. You know, rain rain don't come in solid sheets. It's uh, you know, it's multiple of different uh, drops that you know not, right. it's not pick up all your scent on the way down. It's not like a it's not you know the downpour is not a one evenly dispersed sheet of water falling exactly at the same moment. It's varying speeds and sizes of raindrops. Yeah, that's the only downfall I could catch on it. That it's right. that's not uh, functional during rain. Right. But other than that, man, I think it'll take your hunt to the next level. If, if uh, you know, there were so many different variables that 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 uh, Ozon- Ozonics is used in. You know, he gave us some great examples of uh, the success stories of hunters that uh, that that really did help out. And I I could see where you know somebody that may not have enough time to change out clothes and put a little scent cover spray on, you know. I could see this product really helping out a hunter that's going straight from work to the woods. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's another piece of equipment you got to bring with you and but it seems to be I mean they did that testing so they know how much it needs to produce in order to basically cover your scent and there's a, there's definitely a technique to it. You can't just throw it in your, you know, where you're sitting and hope that it happens. There's, you know, the placement of that unit compared to the wind direction is important too. So there's some other stuff to it, not just turning on, you know, you don't just flick a switch and then you become invisible. You got to place it correctly too. But the technology behind it is tremendous. And I think over time as sales increase, and this is an economics thing, that the price point will come down and then more people will be able to afford it. And you just have to ask yourself, do you want to add another piece of equipment to your already full bag of tricks that you're hauling out there you can decide which ones you're going to carry which ones are going to be the most effective and i think this one could be probably one of the most effective scent controllers that we've talked about so far yeah absolutely i, I agree with that 100 percent um you know like you said it's, it's another thing to carry with you but this could be your lifeline you know as far as controlling your scent and getting that shot off of on a buck of a lifetime yeah there's no you could definitely trick a buck's nose or any deer's nose if you can simply eliminate and make yourself a cloak of invisibility, so to speak, with this scent eliminator. And it's not, not like carbon. It's not like gold or silver. It's even 
finer than that, constantly being produced. It's not like you you, know, you spray yourself down once and hopefully you got enough of it there to control your scent. It's just constantly producing the stuff that is probably and ultimately the most effective scent eliminator known to man, really. Yeah, absolutely. No, the cost effective, I don't know yet, but somewhere down the road that'll that'll play in and will most likely be more uh, usable price point wise for everybody is my guess. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like everything, you know, everything starts out, you know, a computer was what three, three or $4,000 when it first came out. And now you can buy them for 200 bucks. It's uh, it's pretty crazy how the world works as far as, you know, once uh, something gets out on the market, the price goes down. Yeah. Just have to have more and more of it. So, uh, very good. Uh, thanks to Dennis again from Ozonics for teaching us what that's all about. And hopefully that shed some light on that those questions you had about the product because everybody's been hearing about it everybody's been kind of seeing it on tv and see these uh celebrities holding this box and now we know now we know the rest of the story thanks for joining us dennis yeah thanks dennis so dusty do we have a chubby tines tip of the week this week well absolutely we're gonna have a chubby tines tip of the week every week oh good i'm excited about that because i actually i learn something from you every week and i'm not joking yeah. Awesome. I hope everybody learns. That's why we're here, to learn and uh, get educated about going to the woods, yeah. for sure. And you know how I like to bust on you, but I actually do learn from you every awesome. single week. My tip of the week is, if you've got a veteran hunter in the family, and, and he's known for, for shooting mature bucks or nicer bucks, you know, and pretty consistent every year, don't hesitate to ask. You know, a lot of times people either jealousy or intimidation or, you know, just not the right you know i'm not cool if i ask questions you know it, there's a lot of times that asking a question that uh, may get you in a position where you can harvest a great buck just by having questions answered you know i'm a person very fortunate to be successful in the woods and uh you know I, i'm more than happy to answer any question that the hunters have so that, you know that's my tip of the week if you got somebody that's got knowledge about hunting and you know it's proofs on the wall proofs in the pudding however you want to say it ask questions to them 99.9 percent of the time you're going to get a great answer that you can apply in the woods yeah it's one thing to hear it on the podcast but if you actually have somebody sitting next to you that knows a lot more than you do see if you can get them to open up a little bit yeah absolutely you know if, if it's something as simple as stand placement and you want somebody to go to the woods with you ask somebody that you know has got experience and I, i'm not going to say that they're, they're going to be put you in the greatest spot and a guaranteed kill but they're going to be able to go out and the area is going to register better to them and they're going to be more knowledgeable about where the deer are more likely to travel through the woods yep. ask the question hey can you go to the woods with me and help me set up a tree stand as simple as that. Yep. Just ask, you know, can you can you go for a walk with me? Let's go check out my place, see what you think about it. Just ask the question. And, and like I said, 99.9% of the time, they're going to be more than happy to go to the woods with you. They're going to be more than happy to help you out, get get you placed in the, in the right area in, in that particular woods and, and get you on a buck. Absolutely. It, it, there's so much knowledge out there. You just got to know who to tap into and Actually ask a question. That's the way it yeah, works. Yep. Absolutely. You know, don't be scared to ask. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you had any action in the woods so far, Dusty? You know, slick heads after slick heads after slick heads. And uh, last Saturday, fortunate enough to harvest a, a nice, big, mature doe and uh, meat in the freezer for me. Nice. So I'm hoping that uh, here soon I can lay old chubby tines to the ground and give him old dirt nap. I, I wish you well, my friend, and uh, I know that you're dedicated and that because you're logging the hours that you are and you're logging a lot of them, um, it, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, it's one of them. My wife says I've hunted harder this year than I ever have in the past, and I have to agree with her. You know, um, man, I I think that, like, you know, I've heard of getting, like, couch sores from people sitting on the couch too much. Yep. I might have tree stand sores. Right tree now. stand sores. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh God, the visual is just not good. <laughs> it's not, you know. Oh, I, I had to wear like one of them donut. I had to sit on a donut for a couple of days to get it relieved out there in the tree stand. But other than that, I, you know, I, I am logging some hours. That's a fact. 
<laughs> That's good. I don't know what it is. I feel way more motivated since the inception of this podcast than I ever have. And I think it's because I learned so much more of thing, other things I want to try, new techniques that I wasn't doing that I know will lead to more success. I just have this, this passion, this burning passion. I mean, I was hot on hunting before, but I just, there's a, there's a new level of excitement that I'm feeling this year. And I don't know exactly why, but I think it relates to the podcast. Yeah, I agree to that, you know, and I'm going to say this, and it's one of the things where it's like, uh, with being on the podcast, having listeners, and we we love everybody that listens to us and tunes in with us every week. It's what we do it for, but I've set my standards, you know, I feel that if I'm going to talk deer hunting on the podcast, I've got to, I've got to back it with a nice buck. Right. And and that's my goal. I I want to prove myself that uh, not only do we enjoy hunting, but we're good at it. Well, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm the most skill hunter in the world, but well, I'm, I'm, I'm not the worst either. I know that. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm the most skilled or a pro or an expert. But I'm going to prove to the, to the followers that uh, old Dusty Phillips knows his hunting. Yep. Yeah, I, that, that, I just set my standards a little higher, you know, just, just to make sure that uh, that when, when we talk about things and we share things, that is something that works for us. Yeah, exactly. Yep, I want to use the things that work for others and add them to my bag of hunting techniques. And I want to make that work. So, But you're not going to make it work sitting on your couch. I can, I can guarantee you that. Nope, couch sores are no good, but tree stand sores are all right. Perfect. That's exactly what you want this time of year. I've had a little bit of action. I, I swear I need to put down my gun and just carry my bow uh, to put meat on the table, that is, because I've gotten close enough for bow shots multiple times already was some of the biggest doe I've ever seen, uh, practically ran me over because they were intimidated by another hunter that was coming up a ridge. These deer came flying over the ridge at me and no antlers whatsoever. But had yeah. I, if I had my bow, I would have had some meat in the freezer. That's uh, it's one of the things where regardless of what you're carrying, that opportunity will always be present. I, I don't know why. It seems that if I go ahead and shoot a doe, Weeks after, there's doe after doe after doe after doe right in front of me. Right. You know, it's just one of the things where it's like they know your doe tag's filled. It's a good point. It's like just karma. It's the hunting karma of the woods. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's one It's one of the things where I, I can go for, you know, four to three to four days and not see a deer. Then I shoot a doe on Saturday morning. The following day, I've got like eight does in front of me. Yep. They're like just, you know, lounging around like they're at the uh, social bar having a beverage. <laughs> just true. lounging. And, you know, yep. any, other, any other day they either run through, they was just out of range, wouldn't see them at all. They'd be 300 yards out crossing the field. But after I shoot that doe, I've got them right in front of me all day, every day. Yep. I, I do want to put some meat in the freezer, so I do intend to take uh, one with my, my bow. Uh, buck or doe. Um, I'm hof- hoping for a doe, and then I'm going to focus uh, more on the the larger bucks after that. I really don't. One thing I'd, I'm not real keen on is taking an immature buck. I'm seeing, you know, I see pictures from other people that are that are taking one year olds, two year olds, three year olds, and I just I want that, you know, four year old plus deer. Right. I agree to that. Yeah. So that's my goal this year. Absolutely. Oh man, I think that's a wrap. I think we've uh, we've got our scent covered. We got all the knowledge and covered about the scent uh, with Ozonics and Dennis. And thanks again. Um, any parting words, Dusty? You know, uh, hunt hard, hunt safe, and uh, keep it in the kill zone. I like it. I like the safety part of that. So good luck to everybody. Send in your picks. We want to know, Dusty. How can we find you? Facebook.com forward slash Chubby Tines Outdoors, Dusty Hunt Neck on Facebook, and I've opened up a new adventure called Antler Life. You know, everybody's living the antler life, so check it out. It's uh, new to Facebook, and uh, we're going to see what we can strike up there. That's how you can reach out to me. Jay, how can the people reach out to you at the Big Buck Registry? The Big Buck Registry. All right. So is that a hashtag for Antler Life or is that just, is that a page? Uh, actually, it's a page and okay. uh, you can hashtag also. I've got a hashtag started for it. Uh, you know, it's just one of them things where I'm living the antler life. You're living the antler life. Everybody that's out there hunting is living the antler life. I like that. I like that a lot. I like, I like the hashtag antler life. You could have a whole 
cult by the time we're done. That that could be where it's headed, you know. Uh, I, I just it's one of them things where I'm so into to antlers, it's unbelievable. You know, I'm living the antler life. Nice. Well, let me get back to your original question. I just had to say that because I think it's cool. Um, all right, so Big Buck Registry is bigbuckregistry.com. That's our website and blog. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash bigbuckregistry. Twitter is twitter.com forward slash bigbuckregistry. You can give us a call at 724-613-2825. That's our feedback line. And I would like to invite you personally to join us on iTunes, which is www.bigbuckregistry.com forward slash iTunes, where you can pick up with your Apple device all of our shows, or you could go to Stitcher at bigbuckregistry.com forward slash Stitcher, which is for all the non-Apple devices, and listen to every single show we've ever done dating back two years. So that that's kind of cool. And I would invite you to subscribe to the show because it's free to do so it's free to get updates and notifications that there's a brand new show that just came out and it's not annoying. It just kind of flicks on there. And by doing so, if you would give us a review as well, if you like the show, if you've listened to a few episodes and you like the show, give us a review, give us a five star. If you would, if you don't think it's worthy of a five star, Hey, that's all right. We understand. We'll, we'll accept that because we're always looking for improvement here. And if you would like to share a picture of a deer that you shot, please send it to www.bigbuckregistry.com forward slash my buck. You'll find all the instructions there, a couple of different options to get the pictures sent in. And if you are an outdoor outfit, a hunting group, um, a hunting outfitter, you're starting a hunting page, you love hunting, you just started a F- Facebook page and you want to get a little bit of more recognition for your page and tap into 130,000 fans and followers on the Big Buck Registry on Facebook, just go to www.bigbuckregistry.com forward slash S4S, and we'll, we'll check it out. And if it meets our criteria, we'll share you on our page too. Whew. i got to breathe, man. <laughs> and, and if you know how to dance... All right. If you wear cologne dancing, go get some Ozonics because then you don't even have to take the <laughs> cologne off. You don't have to take a shower. Just go get an Ozonic box and you're good to go. You can go dancing on a Friday night like Jay does and get up and hit the tree stand in the morning with the Ozonics. Or better yet, you can go dancing in the morning, don't even take a shower, and then go right to your stand. Flat out. Doesn't even matter with Ozonics. Now, now that's something there. Some pretty powerful stuff, actually. I mean, I guess if you can kill the scent and that's coming from burnt teeth. You ever drill a hole into an antler? Yeah, that's the most it stinks. Oh man. And wow. that's where this technology was developed was for drilling holes in teeth, which is like drilling holes in antlers. It's the same smell. And that was created to control that smell. So if it can control that smell, it can control any smell. Absolutely. I what? agree to that. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm Jay Scott. And I'm Dusty Phillips. And this is the Big Buck Registry's Big Buck Podcast. See you next week. As long as he's not dancing. Can't wait. (laughs) 